I'm on my way to my father. But I will return. Now it states in the supreme wisdom regarding the purpose and nature of the 25,000 year cycle or cycles of God's plan. It states, question, which is what Master Father Muhammad asked the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This question is to him. Who made the Holy Quran or Bible? How long ago? Will you tell us why does Islam renew her history every 25,000 years? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's answer. The Holy Quran or Bible is made by the original people who is Allah, the supreme being or black man of Asia. The Quran will expire in the year 25,000, 9,080 years from the date of this writing, which occurred in the 1930s. The nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. The planet Earth, which is the home of Islam, is approximately 25,000 miles in circumference. So the wise man of the East, black man, makes history or Quran to equal his home circumference, a year to every mile. And thus, every time his history lasts 25,000 years, he renews it for another 25,000 years. Now, this also gives us the best answer to the question that some people have raised regarding the whereabouts of the nation of Islam amidst the social tension and unrest taking place throughout the United States. Well, for those who have asked that question, whether you were black, brown, or Caucasian, the answer to you is look in the mirror. That is where you will find the nation of Islam. Those of us who are registered members of the Lost Found Nation of Islam and consider ourselves to be believers in Almighty God and in his Messiah are no more or no less under the sovereign power of Almighty God than any other human being on the earth. This specific group, the registered membership, are those who strive to follow the specific advice and instructions of Allah's Messiah, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Now, during the Honorable Louis Farrakhan's last Savior's Day address, he stated that President Trump was written in the prophecies of the scriptures. He referenced the Bible where Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, is somewhat a prototype of President Trump. So if we want to know a little more about the thinking and actions of President Trump, then we can read the biblical narratives about Nebuchadnezzar. But let us consider this one. It states. Now, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan also stated that President Trump would be the last U.S. president. Now, let us continue with the Messiah's walk through the fulfillment of the Messianic prophecies. Now, in the previous message, we covered how aspects of the domestic life of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is forecast in the biblical narrative of Samson. That's what we covered last week. We want to re recap this. Now, this narrative is in the book of Judges, spanning chapters 13 and 16. Now, it states in chapter 13 again. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years or 40 years. So Samson is born after this 40 year period. Because he's later he's born in this chapter towards the end of chapter 13. In its fulfillment, this 40 year period represents the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's time among us as the Messiah which ended in 1975. Then, according to the last verse of chapters 15 and 16, again of the book of Judges, Samson works as a defender or savior of Israel or the children of Israel, of Israel for two 20-year periods. Now, this could refer to the periods of 1981 to 2001 
as I mentioned in the previous message, and the second 20-year period could, ref could refer to the period of 2001 to 2021, which is right around the corner. Now, according to the biblical and Quranic narratives, Joseph is beloved by his father, Jacob. And because of this, he is envied by his brothers. Joseph is granted a vision from God of his glorious future, where he is destined to attain eminence throughout the heavens and the earth. Now, this is described in the Bible and Holy Quran, and we're going to cover this not really extensively, but almost close. So in the Bible, it states. Now, Israel, meaning Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, here, I pray you this dream which I have dreamt or dreamed for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Now, for those who know the history of the lost foundation of Islam prior to 1975, particularly the relationship between the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, it is not an insurmountable task to place aspects of the prophetic narrative of Joseph adjacent to the events in the history of the lost foundation of Islam. Now, after sharing these dreams, which Joseph, which informs Joseph of his destiny. Joseph experiences a series of excruciating trials required to, pre to prepare him for his destiny. Joseph is rejected and betrayed by his brothers who sell him into bondage. Joseph is falsely accused of a sinful act that he did not commit and although proven innocent, he is maligned and unjustly in prison. Finally, in the wise plan of God, Joseph is exonerated and given great authority in Egypt. He then brings his family to him in Egypt, where they too flourish under his divine governance. And that's why Joseph is one of the most beautiful stories in the Holy Quran and also in the Bible. Because most of us like to see somebody who's trounced unlawfully rise up and redeem themselves and get to where they were predestined to be before everything else, all the drama took place. Now, let us briefly consider each of these scenes, especially the scene that bears on the domestic life of the Messiah, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Now, again, the synagogue of Satan has only one stone to throw. And that stone is to be thrown at the domestic life of the Messiah in their effort to disgrace him through lies and slander. And not just the U.S. public's eyes, but in the world public. Now, the Messiah, as the ideal man of God, he touches the very nature of, of the woman as a creation of God. That's one thing that these verses relate to, how he affected women. So the act of women cutting their hands in amazement could relate to the Messiah's presence and vast teachings on the divine nature of the woman, which enable women to release the pain of suppression and oppression brought about by a satanic world that dishonors 
disrespects, abuses, and enslaves women to the sexual appetites of societies ruled by the minute men. So in the Holy Quran, the initial responsibility of the Messiah is to encourage women to cover themselves with modest attire. Now, again, we're still on the narrative of Joseph. This is part of parsing that scene of the women cutting their hands. Now, it states in the Holy Quran regarding the Messiah's instructions or Allah instructs the Messiah as such. O prophet, tell thy wives and thy daughters and the women of believers to let down upon them their overgarments. This is more proper so that they may be known and not be given trouble. And Allah is ever forgiving, merciful. So the MGT or Muslim Girls Training Class of the Lost Foundation of Islam represents the Messiah's implementation of this divine command. And this divine class for women is not confined to black women only. It is for all women in North America, black, brown, red, yellow, white. And that's according to the Supreme Wisdom lessons given to us by Master Farad Muhammad. So this bears on the true essence of the domestic life, which is the divine reformation and elevation of all women. 